Welcome back to Squawk Box. Our next guest uh, is gathering bipartisan support for legislation to permanently end future government shutdowns. Uh, let's welcome Senator Rob Portman of Ohio. Uh, the senator formerly served as a U.S. trade rep, OMB director. Uh, senator, uh, thanks for joining us. So, Good morning. We'll start with just uh, uh, what I just said, and that is that there could actually be legislation to prevent that. How would that, how would that work exactly? It, would, would it be... Uh, would it pass muster with the Constitution? I mean, can you, can, you do, can you write a law like that? Yeah, I mean, Joe, all you say is when you get to the end of a spending cycle, you don't go into a shutdown. Instead, you continue the spending from the previous year, but then you reduce it after 120 days by 1%, then another 1% every 90 days to give the Congress, and particularly the appropriators who'd like to spend money, the incentive to come back to the table and actually do the real spending bill. So it just takes shutdown off the table. And, we got about half the Republicans in the caucus supporting our legislation now. We've also got the American people supporting it in the sense that I saw some polling this morning. It said when given the options of, you know, a shutdown or a national emergency uh, or a continuing resolution or something, 9 percent said shutdown. Two to one, people said, stop these shutdowns. So I think we've all learned, again, the lesson we learned after every shutdown, which is this is bad for government workers and their families. It's bad for taxpayers who don't get the services. It's certainly bad for the economy. Uh, CBO came out this week, Congressional Budget Office, with another analysis saying the net impact on the economy negative was about $3 billion. And finally, at the end of the day, Joe, taxpayers don't save money because you actually pay people back who haven't been working. In other words, if you've been furloughed, you get paid back. So it, 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 it doesn't work for anybody. Right. So but, but what, but this is not going to be law by, by the time we're facing another shutdown, is it? Well, my hope is to include it in the package. You know, whatever we do, and I'm, I'm for more border security, as you know, we've talked about it on this program. I think the president's got a reasonable pro proposal in terms of more structures, but also other border security. I also think adding the immigration things he wants to add, they're pretty simple, ought to be done. But then we ought to also put in that legislation that there shouldn't be shutdowns in the future. And I, I think on a bipartisan basis, people would applaud that. I've, I've seen that there are... Uh some numbers out. I, I guess maybe they were generated by, by your party, so maybe, you know, would take that with a grain of salt. But they were looking at uh, a lot of Democratic uh, regions that, uh, that President Trump won, uh, and, and that you, there could be some pressure put on some of the, the Democrats there to break with Speaker Pelosi and, uh, and actually support something in three weeks, whenever it is. Um, have, have you seen that? And she'd still have to, uh, Speaker Pelosi would still have to bring it up, right? Even if they break with her, they, they can't go around her, can they? Well, it's going to be done in a, what's called a conference committee, so I think she probably has a, a, a you know, pretty good influence over that. But, so it's a small group of members who are trying to work something out, and the idea is that that would then come back to the House and Senate for a vote. And, and I think we've only got, you know, two weeks in a day now left to do this, so we got to get busy on it. But, yeah, look, I think you're absolutely right. I think when you ask the American people, do you want a more secure border, uh, most people say, yeah, of course. I mean, uh, among other things, you've got the drug issue, which is affecting all of us in Ohio, as you know, your home state. We, we are getting hit with that. Crystal meth coming from Mexico, heroin 90% coming from Mexico, cocaine coming from Mexico. So, yeah, we need better screening at the ports of entry. Democrats are for that, by the way, Joe. Uh, but also the immigration issue. You know, I think people realize you, you've got to have an immigration policy that works. And the president's proposal is not for a wall from uh, sea to shining sea, and it's not for a concrete wall at all. It's for following the experts' advice, the Customs and Border Protection Border Security Improvement Plan, which has been embraced by our last two spending bills up here on a bipartisan basis. And his $5.7 billion is to fund the top 10 priorities of that plan. And it's a plan by experts. And sometimes it's vehicle barriers, which are low. Sometimes it's pedestrian fencing. Uh, sometimes it's these steel barriers the president's talked about. Uh, but it's only 234 miles out of a 2,000-mile border. So uh, I think in the past, because Democrats have supported that kind of fencing, it's kind of tough for them to say they don't support anything now. You know, uh, I just wonder what's really going to happen, though, Senator. They we had a poll, an NBC poll, that had, uh, you know, Trump is blamed, but his approval was, was fairly flat, and Pelosi's disapproval rose more than any other, uh, any, other any of the other players. But I think she's being told by uh, her acolytes that she's now president and, and more powerful than, uh, than in the White House. And I don't know, that would go to my head, I think. I mean, do you, do you see any way? <laughs> That, that, we got to get, get politics out of it. I think you're, uh, yeah, I, I think, I think you're do you, right. You feel any? Do you see any way that this turns out 
other than a, uh, the, the president uses some type of executive power, which we've seen before. Republicans didn't like it when Obama did it with, with Dreamers. I mean, would, would, will he do that? And, and then it's going to be in the courts immediately. Yeah, it, I hope it doesn't come to that. I mean, by the way, you're right. If it does happen, I think there'll be injunctive relief. In other words, the courts will step in and say, oh, you can't do this. And I don't know how long that would last, maybe through uh, the rest of his presidency. So you wouldn't have the border improvements that everybody wants. I mean, we can argue about whether it should be 234 miles and what kind of fencing it should be. but. I think people agree that we need to have a secure border, and in some urban areas, particularly in Texas, where there's no fencing now, the Border Patrol badly wants to have some ability to at least slow people down, so then you can use the sensor technology, the cameras, the drones, the more increased Border Patrol, and so on. So it, it, there's a sensible plan here. Uh, one of the frustrations, Joe, is that you know sometimes we're far apart on stuff around here. Think healthcare. <laughs> in this case, we're really not. I mean, we're really not that far apart, and it, it's, it's a matter of are we going to spend a few billion dollars more more to be able to have the kind of comprehensive border security that people want, or are we going to play politics with this on both sides? And, and let's not. Let's get this thing resolved. National emergency is something the president probably does have the right to do, but as you say, it's it's not something Republicans have traditionally supported. It shifts power more to the executive branch, but also it's going to get tied up in the courts. You were a trade rep. What is this? Uh, this shifting gears are. Um is there any chance that, that something good happens in, in the near term with China, or is it just too complicated and too many moving parts, too many different uh, facets to the deal? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, it has to, in the sense that we don't want to go to March 1st and, and have this increase in tariffs, another 10 percent on about $200 billion of product. Instead, we got to work something out. And the Chinese have shown, I'm told, uh, more willingness to do that uh, on a few different fronts. One is the IP theft, the intellectual property theft that, that sort of started all this, which is clearly an unfair issue between China and the United States and China and the rest of the world. And second is these, you know, the way they deal with joint ventures and licensing, uh, effectively taking IP through, through that as well. And then third is just the, the enormous trade imbalance we have. And my sense is that China is willing to buy more soybeans and willing to buy more natural gas and some things that make sense for their economy. So that could help with the trade imbalance. But we also have to work on these structural issues. So my hope, Joe, is the talks go well this week. Uh, they're meeting again today uh, at a high level. And that before March 1st, we can get at least some indication of where we're headed uh, and get something on paper that, that's enforceable and then continue to work on it and not increase the tariffs again. But in the meantime, uh, the tariffs are going to go up again on March 1st unless something happens. Well, you're doing a terrible job with, uh, with Cincinnati sports teams. So, I, I mean, is there a, I mean, really? Uh, what is it? The hey, Bearcats? Basketball? Is it, I mean, Xavier, the, the, the basketball, it's not like it was. Uh, I mean, Mike Brown just ruined the Bengals, obviously, for 20 years. What, what about the Reds? Anything positive happening there? The Reds, Reds are coming back. I understand they, they might get a, a, a superstar, uh, all-star catcher soon. Uh, that's that's the rumor. So, I mean, we'll see. Look, I, I think it's all about pitching. And if the Reds uh, pitchers can stay healthy and they can get a couple more starters. What do you do? What, what, what are you determined. following? Are you following the St. Xavier uh, swimming <laughs> the swimmers or something? What, is there anything to follow in, in Ohio now? Absolutely. Well, look, the Cleveland Browns just had almost a winning season, you know, uh, seven, seven and eight. You're, you're, you're in Cincinnati, for God's sake. So Cleveland Browns. Well, I'm a Bengals fan first, but I'm a Browns fan second. Well, you know, state Baker, center. Baker Mayfield was the entire state. That doesn't mean you, that doesn't mean I do like uh, the Browns did have a great, uh, you know, they, they've given out beer if they won support. one game and then they won, uh, won quite a few. Anyway, Ohio yeah. Senator Rob Portman. Thank you. It's not your fault. I don't blame you. Andrew. You blame I'll, me for I'll see you. Yeah, Andrew did, Andrew's under the weather. I'm under bit. the weather. Oh, really? Okay. Senator, I'm sorry to say. He had like a hole thing I've been, in I've his been mouth. All morning. Yeah. But, uh, it's nice right. to see you uh, across the way here. Thanks, guys.